Hi, Fisher Unit Tech SolidWorks community. This is Heather from Tech Support. Thanks for checking out Jay's video on using weldments and sheet metal together in SolidWorks. This video is a segment from our monthly webinar, Straight From Support. If you'd like to check out this and other videos from this week's episode, be sure to check out the links in the video description and join us the third Wednesday of every month for Straight From Support. On that note, let's jump into our topic. Um, so today what we're gonna talk about is how we can use sheet metal and weldments together. Uh, a lot of people tend to think that they exist in different worlds, and they do to a degree, but we're going to look at how we can not only use them together, but specifically use them to solve issues that the other might present. And so the question I get a lot is, hey, aren't sheet metal tools meant for sheet metal? Well, yeah, they are. And, you know, when we go to our sheet metal tab, we got our base flange tab, our convert to sheet metal, lofted bends, all these different things that are meant specifically for sheet metal. And a lot of times I see a lot of customers who are going through and saying, hey, you know, I was going to model this sheet metal part, but it was easier to model in 3D. And then, you know, they try to convert it to sheet metal. And I always get on, I'm like, hey, look, you got this tool set here specifically for sheet metal. You got to use it. You got to know how to use it um, so you can get the best results. But what happens when the tools that are actually provided for sheet metal still can't get the results we need because of a known issue, okay? That's where we're going to start looking out of the box and thinking of different solutions that we can use to get to where we need to be. In this case, we're going to look at or just consider two known issues that are currently happening in, in 2018. Actually, uh, I'm pretty sure they're still existing in 19 as well. SPR 934723 says that sheet metal uh, you get an unexpected behavior when flattening a circular or curved sheet metal body uh, that's multi-body part, all right? So that creates an issue. Uh, and 772173 says with a multi-body with a multi-body sheet metal part created by using the split feature, sometimes you'll miss flat pattern information for the second uh, flat pattern or subsequent flat patterns that are created from there. So this can generate uh, kind of a predicament. Uh, for specific models that we're making out of sheet metal. The case in point for this example would be a customer who needed to create a uh, rolled sheet metal elbow, okay? And particularly with this rolled sheet metal elbow, he had breaks and splits in each section so they could be flattened that needed to be alternated for the specific way that he was welding it, okay? So, while there is a workaround that he found for it, and actually it was actually from of our, one of our, uh, our uh, employees here at Fisher who provided the workaround, it wasn't exactly, I would say, the best way he could go about working around this issue. And, I, and I'm going to explain why. Well, to start with, the way, that the, the way that the workaround ended up happening, hold on one second, I'm getting a uh, feedback here on my microphone. Uh, it involved using a different approach with using a sweep, okay? So if we look at the feature tree here on the customer's uh, part list or feature list here, I can see that they started out with a weldment feature, or no, not a weldment feature, but they started with a sketch that went through the body, okay? And then they did a sweep, and then after the sweep, they had to go in make some other sketches to uh, put splits in each body. And then after those cuts were made in each body, they had to go and use a split command to split it up into three separate bodies, okay? And actually, you can see that they, after they did the split, that's when they did the, the cuts for each body to, to break them apart. And then they went in to go convert it to sheet metal using insert bends, which created the uh, flattened bend features all the way down here to get our flat pattern. The only bad thing with that, other than the fact that it's a lengthy process, a lengthier process here, is once you add insert bends in here and you convert, convert these to sheet metal, well, if you save these bodies out, you have to reconvert them to sheet metal once they're saved out to individual bodies, okay? So again, while this works, it's not exactly an ideal solution um, because there's a quicker way to do it, and that's what we're going to look at. So this particular workaround can be improved 
uh, by using an unlikely tool set. Okay, when I talk about sheet metal, most people don't consider weldments and the weldment feature, specifically with structural members. But with structural members, I can get a solution using fewer features, less time in creation, and have a whole lot more flexibility when I'm building this out. And just because your mind is baked into thinking that when I'm talking about structural members, I'm talking about using uh, you know, C-channel and stuff like that, you know, we can use it different ways. Let's look at the actual model here real quick. Okay, this was the customer's model. If I roll my uh, bar back here, I can see that they started with this sketch here for a profile. And that's a placement reference because they used another sketch up here for the other profile and then another sketch for the path. And so they swept this. In sweeping this, they create one single body, which they then have to go and use the split command to split up into three separate bodies. There's one body, second body, third body. Then they used a series of revolved cuts here to make breaks in each piece, okay? So they had to put three of those in at alternating sections. And then they were able to go in and uh, set up the uh, insert bins. And that works, but like I said, with weldments, we can, uh, we can do this a little bit better. So the secret in this, the secret sauce, I like to say here, is the profile. Once I have a correct path to push along, all right, all I need is a profile. And with weldments, profiles are the name of the game. Everything is driven from the profile. Once I make a weldment profile, I can use a simple diameter, right, without any location points or any handles because it's only going to be connected from the center point. And then I'm going to split that profile and offset the, the entities for my material thickness. Let's do that real quick. I'll come over here. I'm going to start a new part, and I'm going to say uh, part inch. And I'll start a sketch right here on my front plane. And I'll make this kind of simple. I'll start with the center line. I'm going to zoom out so I can get a, a good height here. Right about, let's say there. And then I'll create my circle actually using a center point arc. Like so. Because now I can use these endpoints in that center line to get a symmetrical relation and pull that in using a dimension. Let's say it's a let's say it's a quarter inch. And then I'll set this guy at a diameter of fifty seven and a half. And I'm gonna pull that line straight up here through here so I know that's right in the middle. After that, it's just a matter of offsetting my entity for my material thickness, but watch how I offset this. I'm going to go ahead and select this entity. I'll say offset entities, and I'm going to set it to an eighth of an inch, but I'm going to reverse it on the inside, and I'm going to select cap ends here with lines to close off the ends of my profile. That way I know it's a closed profile, and ever since 2017, they shade the contours when they are closed just so I know. So now I have really the cross section of a sheet metal rolled elbow. I can leave that sketch now and while it's highlighted, I want to make sure this is highlighted. Remember, if I want to save a library part, so I'll go up here and say save as. All right. Um, and before I do that, actually, I want to change this because I have this, that dimension there actually set to a diameter or set to a radius, I'm going to set it to a diameter and make sure it's that 57 and a half. There we go. That looks better. I'll bring this endpoint in here a little bit better. Make sure it's right where I want it to be. Let's place it right there. All right, so again, I'll go back, make sure my sketch is selected, and I'm going to go to Save As, 
and I want to set this to a library feature part. And I'll pop this over here in my Weldments profile. I'll go custom JSON, random standards, because remember with my uh, Weldment profiles, I have to have the proper folder structure to get this to work correctly. So I'll call this Rolled Sheet Metal 2. Okay. So I know that this is set now to a library feature part because I get this nice little L right here on my sketch. So I know it's a library feature part. And at that point, I can really just close this out. I don't even need it right now. What I do need, though, to make this same elbow is a sketch. So I'll go here, go ahead and uh, start a new sketch here. I'll start this one on my front plane, and I'm just going to make a regular little linear path here at an angle and a one at the vertical. And I'll drive this using dimensions like so. Remember, I can, when I'm doing a projected or auxiliary dimension right here, I can lock it by right clicking. I'll say 55. Actually, that's 57. 55. Five. And I'll set this at 45 degrees for the angle. And this one right here is 19.81. Now, is this sketch fully defined? Absolutely not. I need to make sure that the software knows where it is. So I'm going to just place it right here on the origin. And that's going to fully define that sketch. So now that I have this sketch, let's bounce uh, back over here. I have my profile saved. All right. I have the path that I need. I saved my profile in the proper folder structure with a standard type and a size. Now I just need to move in and start using structural members here to place that on top. So I'll come over here to Weldment, and I'll say Structural Member. And here's where the beauty really comes out here. If I set this to the standard that I need, custom JSON type, random standards, size, I'm going to go here, roll sheet metal 2. If I select this first one, I can see that extrusion take place here. Let's go to an ISO view just for a better, a better uh, view. All right. Now, at this point, I have one section. All right. Now, I don't want to tie all these together in the same group. I want to create new groups for each one. So there's a new group. Here's a second one. But this is kind of looking kind of messed up. So I want to go right here to my corner treatment and make sure that I set this to the proper order so it's mitered properly. I'll hit my green check. I'm going to add another group right here. Again, I want to make sure that this is mitered properly. So. I'll flip this, okay? Now I have three separate groups for each body. And the benefit of this is that since they're each individual bodies, I have full control over the orientation. And I could pop one down here on this first one. Remember, we alternated our splits for the body. So I can hop on down here and say, hey, I want this one to be 90 degrees. And it's going to flip my seam right here at 90. The second section is alternated, so I want it to be pretty much where it is right now. And for group three, I'm going to go down here and set this one, that's right, at 90 degrees again. Okay. I'll go ahead and hit my green check. And with one feature, technically two, because the weldment itself is a feature, I've recreated what took a number of different features and operations. Okay. And we're not even done yet. Okay, so but we're 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 ninety percent there with just that one feature. So we went in and we placed the path along, uh, or placed the profile along the path using the structural member. Okay, and we set everything up, set up the orientation the way that we needed it to be. Now all we have to do is just save these bodies out. And to do that, I'm going to use save bodies from the cut list folder. Okay, and what this is going to allow me to do is to get up here and. Uh, take each one of these individual bodies, which are right here, okay, and save them out. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and save this part. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, let's put it up here in um, our blog folder. 
straight from support, and I'll call this rolled elbow. And now I can right click on the cut list and go to save bodies. And once I hit this floppy disk, that's a floppy disk for those youngins listening who don't know what a floppy disk is. All right, I can green check all these and double click them to choose the actual names. So I'll say section one. Actually, uh, I already have these made in here. So let's go ahead and say save one. I'll replace that. Section two. Section three. And that's good. And the beauty of this is I can actually go right here and say copy cut list properties to new parts. So I can actually check that box and say cut list properties. So that way I get all my bounding box information, anything that's baked into the, uh, the cut list right now. So when I hit my green check, it's going to say, hey, the template used for making a derived part is different units of measurements. Do I want to change this? Yeah, I can say yes. It's going to prompt me three times because I have three bodies. Okay, so now I have this segmented elbow. All I have to do now is I can just hop in here, open up a section. Okay, we've used saved bodies here to create our different uh, sections. Now we can go and open up a section and see that it's just a singular body right here. Let me zoom out here. That's one singular section right here. But is it sheet metal yet? No, it's not. I've got to convert it to sheet metal. But I'm going to do it from this part file so I don't have to do it again. And I can run over here to sheet metal and use insert bins. I'll grab my edge here for insert bins, hit my green check, and just like that, it's a piece of official sheet metal now. I can actually flatten this with no issue. And if I have any questions about the specs or any data for it, I can get in here and go to my cut list properties and see my length, angle, everything I need for that bounding box for production if I need to run this out to a laser cutter. Once I unflatten it, it's back to a rolled state, and it's good. It always has my external link or external reference to the original part should I need to change anything else. So once converted, we have our sheet metal all uh, uh, invoked and inserted. The flat pattern can now be invoked if we need to. And I can uh, export that to DWG, and all my cut list properties are still intact.